Thank you very much. So hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Nick Heller, and I'm very pleased to be joined by David Palmer, Chief Product Officer for PairPoint, uh, a Vodafone business. And so we're here to talk about how to unlock the economy of things. So let's start there. Um, experts say that by 2030, there'll be 3.3 billion connected devices of which 10% will be trading and transacting. So I ask you, David, how did we get to this point? How will we get to 2030? Tell us a little bit about the evolution of the Internet of Things into where we are. Um, I mean, what, what I can say is that the um, Internet of Things and digital twins uh, is at the forefront and the core of business, especially manufacturing uh, processing. Um, at Vodafone, um, you know, where I worked in uh, Internet of Things for 10 years, uh, we have uh, 165 billion IoT devices connected. I think the wider forecast in the next five to 10 years is that it will go up to as much as 100, 100 billion. Uh, but these devices are just connected. So we provide, uh, as uh, communication providers, connectivity to these devices. Uh, but they're siloed. Uh, they don't. Yeah, they're, they're siloed. Um, they don't. They, they, they don't communicate across uh, ownership and ecosystems. And uh, you know that that has been a big problem. The next stage, obviously, is to say, okay, if you've got, you know, in five to ten years, seventy billion IoT devices, um, how can we actually unlock an economy? I get them transacting with each other. Get them transacting things like data and services. Um, and that's where uh, the whole PearPoint thing came from. Hmm. So what exactly is PearPoint? I know you talk about connected devices and you talk about some of those challenges in terms of interoperability, in terms of the fact that most IoT devices, I think for many of us, we would think about dumb devices that are connected in some way. What makes PearPoint special? And um, tell us a little bit about the, the product and the platform. Uh, so it's the, it's the next evolution of the Internet of Things, but but I think the exciting point about this is, is it, it, it boils down to embedded payments or embedded finance on IoT devices. So if you have a sensor, if you have a connected car or a connected drone, um, can you embed finance uh, payments on that device uh, so that that device can autonomously um, you know transact? And, and that's what we do at PearPoint uh, by Vodafone. Is um, you know we essentially connect the device. Uh, we, work, we also have uh, 27 roaming partners throughout the globe. Um, so, so a device connected by Vodafone is actually connected across the world. Uh, but, 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 but essentially, uh, we build on that connectivity to provide a digital identity uh, for the device, to provide verifiable credentials for the device, uh, and also to link that device to payment tokens, uh, also to payment rails, so that that device can not only uh, trust other devices, it can identify other devices, it can authenticate with other devices, but it can also transact with other devices. Um, and that, uh, we believe, um, I think some of the statistics, uh, you know, are that uh, by 2030, uh, we're expecting 3 billion the devices to be participating in, in the economy of things, so that, that means three billion tra uh, devices transacting with each other. And we're also expecting that just in uh, in-car payments alone, that that could be 580 billion uh, so, in terms of opportunities. So before we get into some of these use cases, I, I think what um, I'm curious about is that obviously there's this secure element that we all have and know of on a SIM, which is the same that exists in, on cards for the card rails. What's changed now that makes it available to actually do transactions, to have this vision that you are rolling out? Um, so I, I get a bit technical now. Um, Please. But, uh, so, so, so when we started on, on this journey, part of it was saying, OK, as a, and I was just in Vodafone IoT there, um, it was, OK, how can, um, you know, how, how can we enable the SIM to link to blockchain? How can we enable a SIM card uh, to link to payments. Um, how can we uh, enable a device with that SIM you know, to have this autonomous transaction power? So f the first thing we did was essentially look at the SIM card uh, with some of our partners and say, OK, can we create a blockchain SIM? You know, can, can we create a SIM card that could uh, link to a blockchain uh, and actually sign cryptographically on a blockchain? So, so this is where the difference comes, is that uh, you know, with the SIM card, uh, that we've we, we, we've developed or, or, or that we're leveraging, 
uh, we have two types of crypto cryptography. Uh, one is symmetric cryptography, which is used for signing bank transactions, but the other one is PKI, uh, using a technology called IoT Safe. Uh, the other thing that we do is that we manipulate something called elliptic curve uh, cryptography, uh, so that any device with our SIM card can link to the most popular blockchain, so Hyperledger, BESU, Ethereum, uh, R3 Corda. Uh, and the most important thing is that it can actually sign, externally sign, with a digital signature on that chain. So what does that mean is that uh, essentially, uh, from a Vodafone perspective, you've got 165 million devices that can now start participating uh, in this uh, sort of blockchain uh, fintech economy. Uh, and, and wider where PearPoint enables devices outside of that, it goes into the billions. Yeah, that, I, I think that's what's fascinating is the fact that you take the security element and the trust to be able then to build and to transact. And obviously, managing risk is such an important part of financial services. So some of the use cases that actually are born out of this new technology and this new route to market, um, let's go into mobility. You mentioned in-car payments. So I love the vision of having uh, essentially what is a, a debit card or a, a payment device on wheels which is circulating around the environment. And it's a real nice, real-world use case for actually bringing blockchain bringing payments outside of what is a usual uh, customer merchant experience into a device-to-device -device experience. Could you talk a little bit about, about what we're doing on mobility? Yeah, so, so as I said, the in-car payments opportunity is, is uh, you know, really massive. 580 billion forecast uh, in terms of opportunity size uh, by 2030. Mm. Uh, and, and what we're doing um, is really building on, again, the Vodafone footprint and the Telco footprint. So uh, if you look at cars, um, you know, cars have embedded SIM cards. Uh, those SIM cards, uh, Vodafone has 45 uh, million SIM cards in cars. So I think 75% of all the data transmitted across cards, uh, cars uh, in Europe is over the Vodafone network. If you look wider, there's maybe as much as 300 uh, million SIMs in cars. Um, essentially, we're taking the same approach. So we're saying, okay, what if uh, that SIM card that's in the car uh, you know, could, be, could basically power a wallet, right? What if it could be a point of sale? So again, we use the same technology, which is the secure element, uh, the two types of cryptography. Uh, we link that, uh, you know, we, we link, link that SIM card to our platform, which can orchestrate payments. Um, and these payments you know, could be peer-to-peer -peer payments uh, you know, on, on the platform, which is going uh, you know, peer-to-peer uh, -peer across uh, our, our merchants and customers, or um, it can be over traditional payment rails. Uh, you know, some of the technology that's making it possible is blockchain, which is bringing the trust between the ecosystem, um, smart contracts, which is, uh, you know, powering the orchestration, the automatic orchestration of payments between devices who don't have someone with a mobile phone uh, triggering it. Uh, but more, more importantly, um, you know, uh, we, 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 we have the SIM card, right, and the cryptography in the SIM card. All of these things come together to power in-car payments through the car, not through the mobile. And that's the difference. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, it's using that SIM in the car to make the car, uh, you know, give the car a secure element, give the car an identity, give the car the ability to hold payments on behalf of the owner user mm -hmm. um, and transmit the payments for EV charging or drive-throughs, you know, through the car. So I love this use case that extends beyond the, the car to the various places that the car exists. The idea that you could go through tolls, through parking, through smart cities to really start to transact autonomously and in this sort of ambient way, which is a great use case for embedded payments, where uh, a vehicle is actually the payments, um, is, the, is that root of trust in the vehicle is where the, the payments originate from. Um, I think that's super exciting. What other use case in the industries um, are, are you tackling? So, so, so I think, um, you know, as we're in a finance forum, uh, I think embedded pay payments is a wonderful enabler that can uh, power a lot of use cases uh, because you know, the potential to have billions of IoT devices that can now transact, they can be wallets, they can be point of sales, uh, we, they, you know, we can even uh, power asset as a service financing, which we're doing for EV chargers. So for example, uh, EV chargers, rather than uh, just getting traditional financing, um, you know, we can use a smart contract and the SIM technology in, in, in a charging uh, bay uh, so that uh, essentially uh, whoever finances it can get paid back for each transaction. We've got supply chain logistics, uh, there's heavy uh, machinery manufacturing, healthcare. So these are all of the, or the beginning of the use cases that we have 
uh, for embedded payments in IoT devices. Yeah, incredible ideas there around um, merchant cash advances or um, uh, investing in the infrastructure needed in things like IoT, uh, EVC. Um, so, you're live now, platform. Is there anything you want to tell the audience, uh, you know, about you know how they can contact PairPoint yeah, and so, you know, so, so, who so, we're so, talking so, to? So, so, so you'll find us on uh, the Vodafone, um, uh, the, the Vodafone uh, channels, but also PairPoint.io. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn uh, and other social media. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, so you put David Palmer PairPoint or David Palmer Vodafone. Uh, you'll, you'll find me, uh, we're posting about uh, you know, some of the things we're doing, some of the use cases. We are live, uh, we're, we're, we're uh, working heavily in the mobility uh, area at the moment and with a lot of finance companies that are at this conference. Uh, so yeah, happy to update and uh, excited about the future. Excellent, thank you so much for your time, David. Thank you. Thank you so much, David.